I realised as soon as I qualified that if we could put into practice 10% of what we knew, people would be very much healthier. So I started working with people who were very good at organising knowledge, but their knowledge wasn't getting into practice. And then the people in Canada invented something called clinical epidemiology. The clinicians should understand the epidemiology just like we understand biochemistry or physiology. And then they invented the word evidence-based medicine. And I recruited a chap called Dave Sackett, probably the most important thing I've done in my career from McMaster University. And we appointed him to chair of clinical epidemiology in Oxford. And then I thought, clinical epidemiology, how boring is that? So we just changed it to a chair of evidence-based medicine. One of my principles is there are two differences between stimulation and irritation. One is spelling and the other is irritation is much better than stimulation. So sure enough, within a year, The Lancet had an editorial, who are these people in Oxford saying we're not using evidence? Well, we had evidence they weren't. So that was the start of the revolution. The future? The future is EVBM, evidence and value-based medicine. So you've got the evidence, but in a world in which there is greater need and demand than there's money available, then we have to think, well, what's the value? Because we've got evidence that this works and this works, but how do we trade those off? So that's what I see as the future. Uh, evidence Live is terrific and will continue and must continue. And then I'm working with the centre in the department here to develop value-based medicine and value-based healthcare.